This is KGW News at Sunrise. Changing numbers in the Washington congressional primary race. Joe Kent now pulling ahead of six-term Republican Jamie Herrera Butler as more votes are being counted. Also coming up this half hour, another suspected heat-related death in Multnomah County. It would be the county's eighth this summer, and it would bring the total number of heat-related deaths in the state to 15. And in our Sunrise Spotlight, America's Got Talent judge Howie Mandel. AGT getting ready for its live shows tonight. We talked about that, but when I hit on another subject, it was crickets. You kind of broke TikTok, Howie. What was up with that video? <laughs> don't, you, don't you love the look on his face? What Howie finally said about his infamous <laughs> viral video. Plus, he brought his stand-up to A. Lene, his take on Northwest audiences, coming up this morning at 5.15. Also this morning, we are live at Kinnamans. Cinnamons. Sounds cinnamons. like cinnamons, but it's pronounced. Cinnamons. You're telling me it's pronounced cinnamons? Yes, but it's spelled with a K. Eric Patterson, our yes. sunrise photographer, is there this morning. He confirmed it. He told me it was cinnamons with a K. We have a debate. We're going to have to get Eric a microphone. That's I swear. What she just it's said. cinnamon she just spelled said. with a K. <laughs> no, no. He told me it was pronounced with a K. He just All texted right. me. We'll oh boy. be there. We're fighting. In the Pearl District. Back and we're fighting. Why would they call it cinnamons? <laughs> and wait a minute. Why would they call it cinnamon and pronounce with a K? <laughs> because My it's goodness. German. Er. We, we have a debate this morning. Welcome we back to vacation, get, yes. Drew. Oh, thank you, Nina. I'm glad to be back this morning. I'm standing by Rod. You were supposed to text I'm, I'm, Drew what we were having in the I'm show I'm going today. to get my cell phone right now and show you the text I got from Eric Patterson. No, we believe you. We believe you. I don't think she does. <laughs> All right. Okay, Good Drew's, morning, yes. everybody. It is Tuesday. We'll get this all sorted out. You know how your family Maybe. is. Ours is the Maybe. same way. Yeah. What do you have? Hi, Drew's back and it's awkward. <laughs> all right, here we go with the radar. I had to flip on my windshield wiper this morning for about three minutes. You can see some spotty showers in the area. The bigger story today is the threat of some scattered storms here in the valley, potentially this afternoon and into the overnight. Right now we have a heavier shower outside of Bend and you can see quite a bit of rain near the Cascades already to start our morning. So it's kind of a mix of cloud cover out there. Maybe maybe you had enough rain where you look outside and your sidewalks wet 64. Moving forward, generally partly cloudy 83 at noon. We'll watch for that chance of a thunderstorm in the valley later today. Uh, by later today, maybe one o'clock in East Multnomah County, 87 today's high. That's your forecast. All right, Rod, thank you. We begin with that major twist in the primary race for Washington's third congressional district. So let's take a look at where things stand right now. So Republican Joe Kent now leading six term GOP incumbent Jamie Herrera Butler by nearly a thousand votes. But as Catherine Cook shows us, the battle for that coveted second spot in this top two primary is not over yet. A close race is a close race until it's certified. Words to remember from elections officials as the race for Washington's 3rd Congressional District heats up again. On Monday, six days after election night, Republican candidate Joe Kent knocked Jamie Herrera Butler out of second place by 960 votes. Democrat and political newcomer Marie Glusenkamp Perez has already secured first place, with the top two heading for a runoff in November. It'll be, I think, intense and it'll catch some national attention. Political analyst Len Bergstein believes that will be especially true if Herrera Butler, a six term incumbent, isn't there and Joe Kent is. If his campaign is a look back to kind of, you know, uh, restore the grievance of the Trump years, if that's what his campaign turns out to be about, and Perez turns out to be talking about something about the future, then it could make the race a lot tighter and a lot more interesting in terms of people's attention than it might be otherwise if it was an incumbent. On Monday, Kent spoke with conservative radio talk show host Lars Larson. He expressed frustration over division among Republicans during the primary. They want to go along to get along Republicans like Jamie Herrera and Butler. And so it's tragic because we've spent millions of dollars, that the Republican Party has spent millions of dollars working against other Republicans and the Democrat, my Democrat opponent, opponent Marie Glusenkamp Perez, because the Democrats displayed unity and discipline. They got into the top two by spending less than $100,000. Herrera Butler's camp on Monday declined to comment, saying, quote, we're going to watch the vote count for one more day before making any declarative statements. 
In Clark County, 143,060 people voted. That's 44 percent turnout and, according to Auditor Greg Kimsey, the largest primary in county history. Just a very large number of ballots that need to be processed and um, we have never, we've never before uh, been verifying signatures um, the Monday after the election. And there's still around 11,000 ballots left to go with those results expected Tuesday evening. But given the high stakes and quick turnaround before the general election, Bergstein says these campaigns haven't a day to lose, including this one. The campaigns probably right now, I mean, starting today, are probably going to meet and figure out you know, what their top issues are to appeal to, their, to the voters. That was Catherine Cook reporting. To trigger an automatic recount, the results have to be within 2,000 votes and within half a percentage point of the total votes for both candidates. The race meets that first threshold right now, but not the second. So again, more votes will be counted today. We also have some breaking news to get to from overnight and center. Top national story this morning. Supporters of Donald Trump gathered near and around the former president's Mar-a-Lago beach property in Florida, cheering, waving flags, and honking their car horns after an unprecedented FBI raid of Trump's home there on Monday. The search is reportedly focused on material that the former president brought with him to Mar-a-Lago after he left the White House the National Archives had previously requested that Trump return 15 boxes of classified material. The Justice Department was then called on to investigate whether Trump's handling of that material violated federal law. In a statement last night, the former president said his, palm, uh, his home in Palm Beach, Florida was raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents. A senior law enforcement official in Florida confirmed to NBC News that there was law enforcement activity at Mar-a-Lago. The Today Show will have more on this breaking news right after sunrise starting at 7 o'clock. Now to some of the other headlines that we're tracking for you on this Tuesday morning. Multnomah County reported another person has died from the heat. This happened Sunday in Portland. Seven others died in Multnomah County during the extended heat at the end of July. That makes at least 15 who've died of suspected heat-related illness in Oregon this year. Medical examiners will have to do further work to confirm the official cause of death in each case. Also in Portland, a security guard is in the hospital this morning with serious injuries after getting stabbed in the head outside the Oregon Convention Center. It happened yesterday in the middle of the afternoon. Police arrested the 49-year-old suspect nearby this morning. He's in jail. He's charged with assault and was also charged with menacing for an incident earlier in the day. And a driver crashed into a FedEx store in Southeast Portland right across from Mall 205 yesterday. Police believe the driver had some type of medical emergency. Two people were hit by debris and one of them went to the hospital, but we're told their injuries aren't serious. And those are some of your local headlines this morning. Well, the teams that help clean up trash and check on houseless people downtown have a new way for you to get a hold of them. Portland's Clean and Safe program is extending its hours and has a new phone number. It's on your screen right now. So if you're downtown, you can call 503-388-3888. We caught up with a crew in Old Town as they picked up trash and helped those living on the streets. But they pointed out they do a lot more than that, including providing another resource for local businesses who have security concerns. We help people out when they're, they need food or when they're thirsty. Like sometimes I carry like five, six bottles of water. And we're serving as kind of a, a triage uh, for a very understaffed police bureau in, in, a, in a challenging time. Again, that new number is for non-emergency issues like people sleeping in doorways or disrupting businesses. But if it is an outright emergency, of course, first call 911. So this is a story we've been talking about since last weekend, the Roseway Theater in Northeast Portland caught fire early Saturday morning. This is a theater that had a lot of fans and loads of history. There is still no word on how the fire started, but it's being investigated right now. At this point, it's unclear if the theater's ownership will be able to rebuild. We did want to take a moment to remember the history of the theater. So it opened its doors in 1924 to fit more than 600 moviegoers. The first movies it showed, and let us know if you've seen these, were The Signal Tower and Please Teacher. 
Throughout the years, owners have kept the, the theater's original decor inside, keeping the 1920s facade. And you may not know this, but the theater, in its modern form, sits about 300 people. That's half as many as compared to its original 640. They also managed to stay open through the pandemic. Yeah, it's been through a lot. We'll definitely keep you posted as they figure things out from here on out. Rod is here. You mentioned that you saw some lightning. You said you had some rain on your windshield a yes. little bit this morning. Yes, did you guys experience Active. anything this Nothing. morning? Nothing. It was a really quiet drive. Zero. Wow. Well, the two most <laughs> exciting people, Nina and myself. Here's a look at our watch morning map. Uh, just spotty showers in the valley at this hour. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the headlines we're following. Uh, no longer any heat advisories up and down I-5. Uh, we only stayed in the 80s yesterday, in fact. The heat advisory, though, does include in the East Gorge, the Dalles, and then basically out through the Columbia Basin and Pendleton. Temperatures here, 100, 102, maybe somebody hits 103. Okay, in red, this includes parts of the West Gorge. Not Corbett, but it does include Cascade Locks, Bonneville area, and then down into all of Central Oregon. Red flag warning for high fire danger. And the threat today that we're watching in that area is for the potential of thunderstorms. Now, some of those storms are expected have heavy downpours, but on the flip side, there could be gusty wind boundaries outside of the rain areas. So that's the concern. Temperatures in the red flag warning area anywhere from 90 to some areas back up to around 100 degrees. OK, just a dab here and a dab there. You see the green specks on the radar. That's our spotty shower chance. And remember, a future cast actually picked that up uh, yesterday when I talked to you here on Sunrise. OK, this is new, just exploding in the last 15 minutes. Lightning strikes north of Madras. We've had this ongoing cluster up in Washington of some lightning strikes, but this area, the Cascades, Central Oregon expected to see absolutely some thunderstorms during the afternoon and the evening. Here we are at 1.30. Here come thunderstorms building in Central Oregon, running along the Cascades. This shows some rain actually uh, into the uh, east side of Multnomah County here at 4.30. Now we got bigger storms blowing up in Central Oregon. Here's a closer look, and we'll put the clock at 1.30. So that's some fizzling storms producing rain, if this were exactly correct. Maybe in Troutdale area, Camas, Walshugal. 3.30 this afternoon, there's a thunderstorm popping over Mount Jefferson. Um, and then here we are 730. So this showers could move into the valley. And then this is interesting. This is tomorrow morning. We've got storms that went all the way off of the Oregon coast overnight. So this would have been migrated from the inland areas out to sea. And that proves that there could be not showing here, but there could be some spotty storms in parts of the Lama Valley this evening and overnight with a shower chance lingering into tomorrow morning. So 87 today in between all of the rain chances, a partly cloudy day tomorrow, only about 80. And then once we get into the afternoon, we should be without a shower chance. And then it's pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice until we get to Monday. <laughs> and then it starts to get hot again. Back to you. I like the forecast trot. Nice job, Rod. OK, in our sunrise spotlight this morning, America's, America's Got Talent judge Howie Mandel AGT getting ready for its live shows tonight. I asked him about that, plus the question that left him momentarily oh. speechless. Our conversation coming up in a few minutes at 5.15. I can't wait for that. All right, the KGW School Supply Drive going on now. So far, we've raised enough cash and supplies to equip about 1,400 students to go back prepared, and there's so many ways to give. Some of the most needed supplies are the basics, pencils, paper, crayons, and markers. You can drop off any of those at On Point Community Credit Union branches, Dick's Auto Group, or one of many community partners like Lionheart Coffee Company in Beaverton. We want to thank On Point, Safeway Albertsons, Intel, and Dick's Auto Group for helping this year's drive.